virus. <laughs> and I'm a bacteria. <laughs> so, bacteria, how are we different? <laughs> well, virus, this <laughs> and a cell membrane, unlike me. You also have a protein coat, which is RNA and DNA. Basically, it's your viral envelope. Don't forget, I don't have any rap sounds. And you do. I'm also 10 to 100 times smaller than you are. Yeah, and I have a new fleece, a membrane, ribosomes, and a living organ. And I am a living organism. <laughs> Whereas you are neither living nor dead. I also have two ways of reproducing through the lytic cycle and the last. Eventually, the virus enters a lytic cycle and kills the host cells. A bacteriophage attaches to a bacterial host cell by locking onto a specific receptor site on the surface of the host cell. The virus then into the host cell. Once inside the cell, the viral DNA inserts itself into a specific site in the chromosome of the host cell. Viral DNA is then called a provirus. During cell reproduction, the host cell copies the provirus genes along with its own DNA. The provirus is inactive at this time. When the cell divides, both the host genes and the provirus genes are passed on to the two daughter cells. At any time, a provirus may leave the host chromosome and enter a lytic cycle. When this happens, the host cell's DNA is broken down and new virus parts are produced and assembled. Eventually, the cell ruptures and new virus particles are released. There is a viral reproductive cycle in which a virus takes over all metabolic activities of a cell, replicates itself many times, then destroys the host cell. A bacterial phage attaches to a bacterial host cell by recognizing and locking onto a specific receptor site on the surface of the host cell. The virus then injects its DNA into the host cell. The empty coat remains outside the cell. Inside the cell, the viral DNA breaks down the host cell's DNA. The virus then takes over the total metabolic activities of the host cell. By using the raw materials present in the cell, the viral DNA directs the production of new virus parts. The newly produced viral components are assembled into complete new virus particles. The host cell bursts open and releases 100 to 200 new virus particles. These new particles can begin another cycle by infecting nearby cells. <laughs> Viruses aren't very nice because diseases and conditions like AIDS and the flu, but how? Well, in AIDS, I'm able to attack the help of T cells. Am I not in the video? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, in AIDS, I am able to attack the helper T cells which I can replicate in, and then they aren't able to activate. You're killing this. <laughs> so basically, AIDS isn't what kills you. It's other diseases or sicknesses, because then your body can't fight them off, right? Yeah, your helper T cells that would normally be activated to <laughs> go and activate your killer T cells is compromised so your body cannot rid itself of other sicknesses like leukemia for example or even the common cold which i also cause <laughs> all right and what about the flu with the flu you attack the throat cells that's where the flu virus is most comfortable right yes the flu virus does not directly cause the symptoms <clears throat> That's the natural killer cells. They spray interferon and kill the throat cells. And the, <laughs> and the virus, they don't discriminate. And this causes debris in the throat, which causes the cough. The person's body, in an attempt to 
hope for the reproduction, makes their temperature so high that they think cold, and this gives them a fever. So you have to have killer T cells to get to get a virus. Hey, Miss Long. You have to. That is the only way to get rid of a virus is with a killer T cell, which sprays interferon. So. Interleukin is what the natural. That, that's another chemical that makes you feel horrible all over. Does that make sense? Are you taping me? <laughs> No, yeah, no. we can put we're, one in. We're, we're, put one of your little. That's what I was <laughs> We have to have a ten-minute tutorial video. What if we just filmed you for ten minutes just talking about? <laughs> but that's too detailed. They're not going to ask that. Hmm. I don't think. I think that all you need to know are the helper, the helper, <laughs> t the helper T cells. Obviously, are white blood cells. Hi. <laughs> the helper T cells are actually <laughs> the helper T cells. You have to have, now those are advanced. Remember, they are educated in the thymus gland. They're brilliant. The dumb ones are the B cells. You just kind of schlep around and they kind of do the dirty work. But the B cells attach antibodies to the antigens, which is the bad thing on a pathogen or anything that doesn't belong there. Depending on what it is, that's how you determine which cell, which one you need to fight it with. If it is a bacteria, then the antigens, the antibodies are recognized by the macrophages and the neutrophils and they come and surround it and eat it. If it's a virus or cancer, then you need bigger guns. So then you have to have the helper T cells to get the killer T cells to go after the cells that the viruses have infected. Pure and simple, okay? If that happens and they're killing too many cells, you have to have the suppressor T cell to turn it off and to tell them the killing's gone, don't kill anymore, you're going to destroy the body. That's it, pure and simple. With HIV, you don't have the helper T cell to find the killer T cell. You have lost those. So basically, they die of people with HIV will die of cancers and they will die of viruses. You do need the helper T cell to find the macrophages, but not always. That's it in a nutshell. And it's not 10 minutes long. <laughs> you know me, I could ramble on forever, but I don't have time right now.